Okay, so th- I hate these questions because uh, we have to treat them differently depending on which module we're in. If we're in the first module, we could come up with this set. A set data set has 27 different numbers, has a mean of 33 and a median of 33. We could easily come up with this set. We would start by just kind of going with the middle and then going on either side in a very convenient way, right? So if I did a 32 in this set and a 34, the mean and the median would still be 33 because the 32 and the 34 cancel each other out in in an absolute sense for the median, but also in a kind of balancing sense, a weighted sense for the mean. So um, we could keep doing that, 31 and 35, and we could do it until we have 27 numbers, which would mean what? 13 on either side. That's a lot of numbers. And they don't have to be sequential, but for our sake, that's what we want. We want them to be sequential. It's easier. It's, it's just kind of easier to think about. Um, so yeah, we could go all the way to either end and, and think about it. And then it would be much easier to follow the instruction, adding seven to each number uh, that is greater than the median and subtracting seven from each number that is less than the median. So basically that, that 34 would become a 40, what, one? And the 32 would become a 25, right? You're going to just follow that instruction. So we could do that. And then we could prove that uh, which of the following measures does not have the same value in both the original and new data sets. We could prove that the median is the same. We could prove that the mean is the same. We could prove that some of the numbers is the same. We wouldn't really be able to prove the standard deviation is different, but we, we could see just from process elimination that it has to be right. However, that would be very time consuming. And if this were the hard module, we would not have time to do that. So we do unfortunately need to think about this a bit more conceptually, which I do not like. If you watch my other videos, you know that I always say it's better to do math than think about math. It's better to come up with this list and do the mean and do the median and prove it than it is to think about it conceptually and potentially be wrong. But in the first module, you might have 10 minutes extra at the end if you're doing everything right to really tinker with this question and prove it. In the hard module, you will not. So what you need to recognize is that when they describe this data set, they are describing a data set that is balanced, right? Whatever's happening on either side of that mean and median is the same, right? That's what happens when the mean and the median are the same. There's there's this, this kind of balancing where the numbers are the same kind of distance from the mean and the median. So if we add seven to all the numbers on this side and subtract seven, so plus seven minus seven, we're going to kind of keep things even, right? Every every number is just going to be increased by seven or decreased by seven. So the same, they're going to have the same distance from zero. They'll be slightly off, um, further away from 33, but they'll still be um, the same distance off. So uh, that would mean that A and B are both wrong. And another way to think about this is A and B are both measures of the middle. So by adding seven and subtracting seven, we're not really changing the middle, we're, we're changing the ends, right? We're changing the other data points. So how would the middle change? It, it, it's just very unlikely to. I mean, we have proof of it, but it's, it's, it's unlikely to even if we just thought about the definitions of these words. So hopefully that would be enough to get rid of A and B. Now standard deviation is a measure of the spread. So you might also think of this the opposite way, is if I'm adding seven to each number, and decrease on uh, that's on the right side of the list and and, de- and subtracting seven from each number that's on the left side of the list, that's going to spread this data out, right? Whatever, you know, if I had a 20, now that 20 is going to be a 13. If I had a 40, now that 40 is a 47, the data is getting spread out. It's getting further and further from the middle. So that's more likely to be different based on just like the most basic definition of the word standard deviation. So you might pick D just for that. Now, the reason C is um, is wrong is, is more to do with just the fact that if you add seven and subtract seven, you get zero, right? So what's really happening with this set is, uh, yes, every time we add seven to a number that's greater, we're changing the data values. But in terms of a sum, every other number is going to lose seven on the other side. So there's this, again, there's balancing act. Every time we add seven, there's another number that's losing seven. And so that all evens out. So that's that's why this is wrong. But to me, this is a little bit different. Ooh, well, that was weird. Um, this is conceptual, whereas the others, we do have definitions that can kind of guide us. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, again, if you had the time, you could write out this whole list and just do the work. 
you wouldn't ever calculate standard deviation. We don't do that on the SAT. We just think about it conceptually, but you would hopefully from process elimination be able to get there anyway. But on the hard module, you're not gonna have the time. So you're gonna need to be able to do this. And this idea of a set being balanced, being centered, that's really important. We, we see that a lot in these hard questions. So it's kind of a shortcut that we need to be comfortable taking.